There are some characters in the Naruto series that most people don't know their names, but once they see them, they recognize them. They appear here and they're doing some things, sometimes some really cool things, but most of the time they're just not really present. And today we're gonna be talking about one of the coolest among these characters and the strongest Hokage guard of all time. Genma Shiranui, aka the guy that uses his head bent backwards and always has a toothpick in his mouth. He was first introduced in the final stage of the Chunin exams to serve as the proctor because Hayate was very much dead, and he definitely left an impression. But the thing is, this guy has some interesting background feats to his name. He was the guard of Minato, he learned the flying thunder god jutsu, so let's try to determine how powerful he actually was. When Genma was a kid, his teammates were Might Guy and Ebi and his sensei was Choza Akimichi, Choji's dad. We saw this team fighting against Minato's team in the Chunin exams of Obito's flashback, and it's very much implied that they won the fight with Kakashi on the other side, because Obito kinda screwed up by swallowing candy when he was about to use the fireball jutsu, but still it's funny. And that definitely counts for Genma. He was a pretty powerful shinobi back in the day if he was able to fight against Kakashi's team, even if it was just Kakashi fighting against them, it would still be difficult because Kakashi is literally the biggest prodigy in the entire world. He became a ninja when he was five. Genma was also present with Guy and Ebisu when they were cornered by the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist and Might Die had to come in and save them dying in the process using the Eighth Gate. But we don't really see him fight in that particular situation. We just know that he became a Genin graduating from the Academy when he was 10 years old and was promoted to Chunin when he was 13. So becoming a ninja at 10 is actually pretty young, much younger than anybody in the Konoha 12, who were all 12 years old when they became ninja. His early promotion to become a Genin could have been because the Leaf Village was fighting the Third Great Ninja War, and so they would need more shinobi to fight it, but they probably wouldn't graduate somebody that didn't know anything what they were doing, and 10 years old, pretty young. 13 years old to become a Chunin, also relatively young, definitely not prodigy status, because we see several people becoming Chunin way before they're 10, like Akashi and Itachi, and it's definitely nothing to scoff at, because he caught Minato's attention. So much so that Minato chose Genma and a couple of others to become members of his personal Hokage guard. And I don't see Minato picking somebody that's weak to be a member of his personal guard because, yeah, you should be powerful to guard the Hokage. And it's very much implied that Minato picked some shinobi that he thought he could teach some stuff and that had a lot of potential, so much so that Minato literally taught Genma the flying Raijin. Yes, Genma need to use it in conjunction with the two others, but he can still use it. It's a very useful jutsu for bodyguards, like if they're far away from the Hokage, they can just pop into the Hokage's position whenever they want to protect him. Eventually, Genma is promoted to special Jonin or Tokubetsu Jonin, which is a different rank in between between Chunin and Jonin. A Tokubetsu Jonin is a Chunin that has Jonin abilities in just one particular aspect of a shinobi skill set. Now, we don't know which aspect that was for Genma, but I think we can make an educated guess with his feats during the series. Which takes us back to the Chunin exams, the first time he was introduced in the series. And for some reason, he just looks really cool when he's introduced, like for no reason whatsoever, because he's a character that doesn't show up very much, he has a very nice design. His hair kind of reminds me of Sasuke's hair a little bit, but then he has this weird headband style that he's the only person in the entire reverse that uses it. It's kind of a shame that he's not used more often in the series. And then he's obviously proctoring the Chunin exam's final round, telling people to start their fights and to end their fights and whatnot. Pretty standard stuff. I mean, Hayate, the previous proctor, wasn't exactly impressive. The guy was coughing until he was dying almost, and then he literally died. So we're like, yeah, this Gamma dude, whatever, like, he's just proctoring the exam. That's no big deal, right? WRONG! Because when Orochimaru's operation to destroy the Leaf Village commences, then Genma actually does some stuff. Now, naturally, he was in the thick of it. He was literally in the middle of the arena when it happened because he was overseeing the fight between Sasuke and Gareth. And he is an absolute chad in this particular moment when things start to go haywire. He sees Timori and Konkuro dragging Gara outside of the arena to nobody knows where because Gara was hurt and Genma saw the weird chakra of Shukaku leaking out of him, so he was like, hmm, this may be a problem, huh? So he literally looks at Sasuke and says, yes, yeah, Sasuke, the Chunin exams are over, but you're already Chunin level. It's fine, man. You could have passed this thing if Rochimaru didn't invade. So do me a favor, go after the guy we're just fighting and go kill him for me, please. Thank you. 
So he sends Sasuke alone to fight against three people and one that has a freaking monster inside of them. That's such a Chad move, dude. I think he saw Sasuke's hair and thought, yeah, this guy has a nice haircut just like mine. I bet he's really powerful. I bet he can take on three at the same time. I mean, to be fair, he saw Sasuke using the Chidori so he would know Kakashi was training him and stuff and that was a pretty powerful jutsu that he probably respected. But then when Kakashi saw Sasuke leaving after the Sand Siblings, he was like, oh man, what the hell did Genma do, bro? That was stupid. Now I'm gonna have to send Naruto, Sakura, and Shikamaru after them. What a Chad. But that doesn't have much to do with Genma's powers. Now, one thing that he does before Sasuke is about to jump off the arena is to block Baki's kunai with his toothpick. Another Giga Chad move. I don't need to use my own kunai to block yours. I just have to use my toothpick, my dude. And if we go to the Sasuke versus Itachi fight, when Zetsu is talking about ninja weapons and the manga Akira Sharingan, he says that the weapon is not what matters most. What matters is the ability of the user. He says that a master with a pebble can beat a novice using a shuriken. And this is very much what's happening here. Genma beats Baki with a toothpick and Baki was using kunai. And then Genma has this confrontation with Baki. And we don't see how it actually happens. It happens off screen. <laughs> it's not very good, is it? On the one hand, it is kind of disappointing that we don't see Baki and Genma fight, but you have to understand that there were like 20 fights going on at the same time in the Konoha Crush arc, so focusing on two very minor characters fighting would have been a little too much and it would probably drag the pacing down, but it could have given them like two panels. That probably wouldn't be too bad. Still, we don't see them clashing against each other except for the kunai versus the toothpick. However, we do see at the end of the arc, before the Sand Village and the Sound Village retreat, that the arena that the Genins were fighting and that actually became a battlefield during the invasion was pretty heavily damaged. The walls were cracked, there were holes in the ground several signs of battle and yes there were a lot of ninjas fighting in that arena but we see Ganma and Baki still there in the end of the arc so it's very much implied that Genma and Baki indeed fought, and they pretty much stalemated each other. And the impressive thing is that they fought for over an hour because Orochimaru vs. Hiruzen lasted for an hour. It took a long time in that tug of war between Orochimaru and Hiruzen when Hiruzen used the Reaper Death Seal and was ultimately incapable of dragging Orochimaru's entire soul into it. But that entire thing lasts for an hour, so yeah, they were fighting in the arena below for an hour too. Now, maybe they weren't fighting the entire time, but they were clashing for a long time. Maybe they were taking rest in between. I don't know, but they definitely fought. Some people say that they just stared at each other and actually didn't fight, but how does that make any sense whatsoever? The entire arena is a battlefield. There are several ninjas from the Leaf Village fighting against the Sound and Sand Ninjas. Why would Genma and Baki be the only two people there standing in the middle of the arena doing nothing, just looking at each other? That makes absolutely no sense. They obviously fought and they stalemated, so they're pretty much the same level. That's safe to assume. So we can extrapolate that Genma is around Baki's level. Now, you may say, well, Baki's fodder, dude, what are you talking about? But no, actually, Baki is a pretty big deal. First, because he is a Jonin from the Sand Village and a very respected ninja in there. First, because he was literally given the three children of the Kazekage to be in his squad. One of them being a Jinchuriki, so it's very likely the Kazekage trusted this man a lot and thought he was very powerful and capable of taking care of them. And the Kazekage also gave Baki the mission to oversee them during the invasion of Leaf Village because Gara was actually important for their plan. They wanted him to go ballistic inside the village, so he was definitely respected in the Sand Village, meaning he was powerful. And also, the only time we actually see him fight at all, he stomped Hayate. Negative diff. Hayate was another special Jonin, so definitely nothing to scoff at. And Baki had no trouble dealing with him whatsoever. It was done in a single blow. And Baki used his wind sword and BAM! Slashed through the guy. Damn, he's dead. And yes, Hayate certainly had a different speciality from Genma as a Tokubetsu Jonin. But Baki said when he was fighting against Hayate, Oh, you're actually talented. Such a pity I'm gonna stomp you right now. So he acknowledged that Hayate was a talented shinobi. Something that he thought was worth noting during their fight. Something that caught his eye. Meaning that Hayate was definitely not your average Chunin fodder shinobi. And because of the difference between their abilities, I mean, Baki is definitely not your fodder Jonin. Because... 
while he was wiping the floor with a dude. And Genma stalemated him. This makes sense. It's obvious that Minato would choose somebody that can become a powerful combatant to be in his defense squad. Even though it's kind of weird to think about Genma, Raido and the other guy protecting Minato because why would Minato need their protection? I mean, can you see somebody that Minato cannot fight that these guys have to interfere? Of course, I'm joking here. There are other things that bodyguards can do. They can also help out in a particular situation but it's kind of funny to think about that. Also, where were they during the attack of the Nine Tails when Obito attacked Minato? They weren't around. Not very good bodyguards, huh? Maybe Genma was fighting somebody else during that arc, we just don't know. So it's safe to assume that Genma's fighting capabilities are at least Jonin level. His next appearance is in the Sasuke Retrieval arc, and, well, he loses a fight in that arc. <laughs> You're gonna say, well, the cell 4 were just children, man, and he lost the fight. That's not very good. He's probably not Jonin level. Now, it was Genma and Raido versus the Sound 4, and all four members went version 2 curse mark, okay? That's a pretty big deal. First, because the curse mark level 2 granted him 10 times their normal power. Second, because he was a 4 versus 2. And third, because Genma and Raido were out of chakra. They literally said that they were coming back from a mission, Shizune was the team with them and they were like yeah bro let's just check out the disturbance we saw over there even though we're out of chakra let's go and see and it was the sound four and they had to try really hard to beat those two remember that the sound four fights much stronger as a unit than separately when the four of them combine their powers they are more powerful than the sum of their individual parts combining the curse mark two with genma being out of chakra well that's not a very good recipe for him is it especially because the sound four were pretty much rested they didn't really spend their chakra before that. Like, sure, they had a brief altercation with Sasuke in the Leaf Village before Sasuke joined them, but that wasn't very long, and they didn't spend that much chakra in that. But as much as Raido and Gamma would have spent during their mission, and they were still outnumbered. Now, even somebody like Kakashi would have trouble in the situation if he was completely out of chakra. It's not an enviable situation. You also have to remember, the Sound 4 was able to flee with Orochimaru from the rooftop of the arena in the Konoha Crush arc, and the Ambu member guards were after them. Kitomaru was able to use his web to just entangle them, and the Sound 4 was able to simply beat the Ambu very handily. They were also powerful enough to create the barrier that kept the Ambu out of the fight between Orochimaru and Henderson the entire time, and that barrier was really strong, if you touched it, you died, burned alive. The Sound 4 are no joke, and Genma was tired, so it's okay for him to lose this fight. Next time, his relevance is in the War Arc. His first assigned to Mace Team to protect the freaking Feudal Lords. You know the most important people in the world, he's assigned to protect them. That's a pretty good sign, I would say. Genna favors a dual-wielding kunai style during his fights, which is actually really cool, and Giga Chad. And then he's able to transport Mei to where Tsunari was so that the five Kage could fight against Madara. And yes, he cannot use the Flying Thunder God like Minato could because that's literally almost impossible. Only Minato and Tobirama ever mastered that technique. But being able to use that to transport people over great distances is also very powerful and a good ability for a bodyguard to have. But remember that upon arriving in the five Kage fight, Genna was given another mission. He was to pursue Mu, the second Mizukage, in Ero Tensei form so that he wouldn't interfere with the five Kage versus modern fight. And yes, that move was nerfed because he had to fission himself so that he wouldn't be sealed completely, and therefore he wasn't able to use Jinton, particle style, but Mu was still one of the strongest ninjas of his generation. He's nothing to scoff at. Onoki thought he was the greatest threat that the Alliance would face, I mean, before Madara arrived and stuff, but he was very much afraid of what Mu could do, so much so that he joined the fight himself because he was the only person that could do the job. And Genma was assigned to fight this, guy. Yes, he was divided into, didn't have all the chakra, but still very impressive. And Mu didn't even try to fight back. Kabuto could have turned Mu around and said, oh, screw you guys, I'm just gonna kill you with Mu here and then I'm gonna go help Madara in the fight. But that never happens. Mu just keeps on running from them. Until Mu gets cornered by Genma and the squad and then Itachi releases the Edo Tensei so they actually didn't have to do it themselves, but it speaks volumes that Kabuto didn't try to do anything with Mu against 
them. I mean, it wasn't at all tense. It wasn't as though he was going to lose a lot. If Mu was sealed or anything, he wasn't even at full power. So it was like, probably, yeah, I'm, I can't take on these guys here with just Mu. Uh, I'm just going to run away. And sure, Gamma wasn't alone for that particular situation. But he was still in this powerful squad that was chasing down a literal Kage. With all that evidence, it's safe to assume that Genna, first of all, is a Giga Chad and a powerful Shinobi. Now, the speciality for his Tokubetsu Jonin thing was probably fighting. His fighting abilities are probably Jonin level because he was able to fight against Baki, he was able to chase down Mu, protect feudal lords during the most impactful war in the history of the Shinobi world, act as Minato's bodyguard, so definitely powerful fighting capabilities, high Jonin level for sure. Maybe the guy even deserves a full promotion to Jonin, who knows? Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, that really helps me out, and also like the video, we can fight together against the YouTube algorithm, so if you like the video guys. Watch this video right here for more cool Naruto content, and thank you so much for watching.